Okay. Let's turn our Bibles to James. The book of James and chapter 1. Our text, James chapter 1 verse 16 says, Do not err, my brethren, that is, don't, don't turn off the mark. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Come down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. We dwelt on that last week. It says, of his own will, he gave birth to us with the word of truth. What did he give birth to us with? So he gave birth to us with the word of truth. So the word of truth is the foundation of our new birth. The word of truth is, without it, there is actually no new birth. Amen. Without it, there is actually no new birth. So the word of truth is very fundamental to us. And uh, our lives are to be lived on the basis of the word of truth. Amen. So, we want to see how do we regulate our lives and our confessions. To take its root from the word of truth. Remember, word of truth. That is, it's, a wor it's words. Words that we speak. Paul said, which things we speak. Hallelujah. So, verse 19, let's, run, let's jump right into it. I want us to close at 7.30 today, possibly. Okay, it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, so because you are born by the word of truth, because you are born by the will of God, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to rot. We dwelt on that last week. For the rot of man does not work the righteousness of God. We said that also. Now, he now says in verse 21, wherefore, Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word. What is that engrafted word he's talking about here? Huh? The word of truth. So the word of truth is that engrafted word. So when, whether you call it the word of truth or you call it the engrafted word, it's talking about the same thing. Okay? He now says, Receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to do what? To save your souls. Now, if you read that, you say, okay, yes, you may think he's talking about something that is futuristic. Amen. What Paul is saying is this. He's not saying that that word is going to save your soul in the future. He's saying it is that word that actually saved you in the first place. Hallelujah. For example, let's say Sister Lola is sitting on the chair where the air conditioner is able to blow her. Now, does that mean that the air conditioner is going to blow her? It simply means the air conditioner is actually blowing her where, where she is. So when we say the word of truth, the engrafter of which is able to save your soul, He's saying, yes, the ability, the, the ability to save is in that word. Because remember, 
In verse 18, he had told us that we were begotten by what? With the word of truth. So, he's not saying the word of truth is going to save your soul. Now, the word soul there is talking about your person. Okay? Is this is able to save you as a person? The word of God has the ability to save a human being. So he's saying that we should do what should we do with the word? He said, Lay apart and receive with meekness. And receive with meekness the engrafted word. Amen. He said, lay aside all filthiness. So what is the filthiness he's talking about? What is the filthiness he's talking about? Hallelujah. It's in that verse 20 says, the, for the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness. So what is the filthiness in that verse? The wrath of man. The wrath of man is the filthiness. I know some people preach, they'll say, oh, filthiness means, oh, all sins. No, it's not. It's referring to wrath. It's referring, I remember last week I told us that the word wrath there, of course, it means anger. It means to, to be agitated. It means to pick offense. So he said for this word of truth to be able to benefit you, he said lay aside all that. Okay? And receive with meekness that engrafted word. So what are we meant to do with the word? We are to receive. We are to what? Receive. So there is so a Christian can have the word of God and not receive it. Hallelujah. A Christian can have access to the word of God and not receive it. So he's telling us that we should receive and we and, it's, and he explains to us what he means. Amen. So we were first Peter. Let's go to first Peter. Verse chapter one, verse twenty three. From verse twenty two. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. So how have we, how does a believer purify his soul? By doing what? Obeying the truth. Under the influence of the Spirit. So, the believer's purification on a daily basis is when he obeys the truth. He says, seeing that you have purified in obeying the truth, the day you got born again, that was an act of obedience to the truth. Now, it now says that you have to receive. So that word receive is not a passive one. It's an active term. Praise the Lord. Now, how is it, a, how are you to receive it? He now explains to us. Verse 22. But be ye what? Doers of the word and not hearers only. James is telling us the same thing. How do I receive 
the word. By doing the word. A person who only hears the word and does not do it, the person has not received the engrafted word of God. Hallelujah. So the believer has been called to do the word. So what are we? What are we? We are doers of the word. A Christian does the word. Did you hear what I said? A Christian does what? He does the word. You do the word. Doing the word is not about sentiments. Praise God. Doing the word is not about your feelings. Well, I feel like practicing the word today. No. Remember, of his will begat he us with the word of truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. We'll come to dece de 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 deceiving later. But we want to describe what we are looking at, how this word of truth is to be applied in our lives. It says, be doers. It now goes further to explain what he means. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Amen. Put your hand there. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8. 18. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from each from glory to glory. Take note of that. We'll come back to it. Put your hands there. Go back to James. That's Paul's explanation of what James is saying here. So we are going to look at the two of them together. If any be a hearer and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. In a mirror. Now the word natural there is an interesting word. Guess what that word means in the Greek? Can anybody guess? It means Genesis. That's actually the word in Greek. Genesis. And what is the meaning of Genesis? Bible students. Huh? The beginning. So when he says, beholding his natural face, Right? And the word natural means Genesis. What do you think it means? What do you think that means? Verse 18. Go back to verse 18 again. Read. Let's read it together. I want to go. Verse 18, James chapter 1. Of his own will begat he us by the word of truth. Hallelujah. Okay, stop there. Now, he says he's beholding his natural face. Amen. As in a glass. What is the natural? What does that natural imply? And we said it means Genesis.
We are what, what the way which beginning now. Look at verse 18. Of his own will, he gave birth to us with the word of truth. Now, let me explain it. Your natural face is... Now, when you carry a mirror and look at the mirror, who do you see? Who do you see? Do, will you see me? Except I'm close by. You won't carry the picture. I mean, if you see me, you will know that something is wrong. You will bind the devil. Because you are not expecting to see your pastor in the mirror. <laughs> when I'm not a talisman. You understand? It means your face or your person. Your person, who you are at the beginning when you got born again. Or who you are at the new birth. Your beginning started, your beginning as a believer started what? Started at the new birth. If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. So, a doer of the word what is the doing he ought to do? What is the doing here? He said, a hearer of the word who does not do is like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. So, what is the doing? If the hearer does, what is the doing? The doing, the answer is, in, is there. Don't go to, don't think to, to, don't think outside of the box. Uh, stay within the box. Praise God. What is he doing? The doing is the beholding of your face. The doing is the beholding of your face. Now, where do you look at the, your face? God's word. God's word is a reflection of who you are. God in the Bible, right, we have been given, the Bible gives us a reflection of who we are. It tells us who we truly are. Amen. Praise God. Imagine Megan wakes up now and says, Daddy, I have a confession to make. I'm a boy. You know? And she starts telling everybody, Oh, I'm a boy, yo. I'm a boy, yo. I'm a boy, yo. That is not a reflection of who she is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So for the believer, how do I do God's word? People ask that question. Paul, James put, tells us here. How do I do God's word? I do God's word, number one, amen, by beholding. He said he doesn't do so. He's like a man who is beholding his face. One says, ah, I'm going to, I am going to practice the Ten Commandments today. That is, should not be your focus. To practice the Ten Commandments, amen, starts by you doing the word, which is beholding 
your face in the glass of, in the mirror of God's word. He says if this person he has and he doesn't do his is like that, what will happen to him? He says, look at verse 24. He beholds himself and goes his way and straightway does what? Forgets what manner of man he was. Hallelujah. If you don't do the word, it means you are not beholding your natural face in the glass. Or you are beholding it, or you beheld it, and then left and immediately forgot. Now, forgetting that, the word forget there does not mean it's just evaporated from your mind. Amen. It's not forget as the way we use forget here now. It means, in the Greek, the Greek word means to neglect. It means to put down. So, as a believer, he says that the person who does not do the word is someone who beheld and then neglected what he beheld. Or he neglected beholding. So what is the doing of the word? The doing of the word is behold. Keep looking at the word. Hallelujah. Um, before you got born again, A.B., who was your favorite music artist? Adewale Ayuba. Do you, did you know, used to know his songs? Could you sing his songs without listening to him? Maybe you are just sitting down now and you know, you can sing some of his songs, right? Okay? No, don't worry. You are I'm, 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 I'm safe. <laughs> Why could you do that? Because you have beheld the song. So it naturally comes out without effort. Without much effort. Rebecca, who, who is your favorite? Bayern, choir boy, fire boy. Okay, fire boy. I don't know who that is. You know, for fire boy, and you can you remember? Can you still remember fire boy songs? You can't remember. You don't sing them again. No, I didn't. I didn't say whether you still sing. I know you don't sing them again. But can you still remember his song? You can remember the titles. Fella used to be one of my favorites, right? Even after I got born again, you know. And I, I can still sing his songs because I paid attention. To behold your face, natural face is to do what? Is to pay attention to the mirror, I mean, to, to the image that the mirror of God's word is showing you. Hallelujah. So why will I say I am patient? For example, I don't pray, God, Please make me a patient person. No. That will be neglecting. Praise God. What my reflection in the mirror. The mirror tells me I am patient. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. Love is patient. Galatians 
22. But the fruit of the Spirit is patience. So I am not trying to acquire patience. I am patient. So when I see that, now, to practice patience, he says, I've got to be a doer. He said, I've got to be a doer of the work. James said, you are a, be a doer of the work. He did, look at it. Let's look at it. James chapter 1. Verse 25. Whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. What is the work? What does it mean to do the work? What is the work you are to do? I thought I just told us. What is the work we are to do? To keep beholding. To keep looking. No wonder he said, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but I shall meditate on it day and night. In other words, keep looking at your reflection. Praise God. Praise God. You will act it out. Paul says, Ah, that brother is not a. I don't know, that brother is a, is a very impatient brother. He gets angry easily. So, pastor, I'm an, I'm, I am an easily angry person. How can I deal with that? You know, how do I deal with that? This is it. James tells us what to do. Amen. You are not to focus on, ah, I will, today, I will not be angry. I will not be angry today. I will make sure I watch everything that I say so that I will not be angry. That is not how it is done. The Bible says that if a person is angry and starts acting angrily and sins, right, it's because that person has forgotten what manner of man he is. What is it the, what has he forgotten? He has forgotten his natural face. That is, he has forgotten who he is as a result of the new birth. Forgotten there means he neglected it. He put it down. Instead of focusing on it, he said, no, he said, let's put Christianity uh, aside. Do you understand? That is someone who has forgotten his natural face. Why did he forget? Because he's not doing. What is he doing? Amen. Meditating on the word. Someone says, I want to school myself to speak right. You will speak right when you do the word. Your confessions will come naturally out of your natural face that you are beholding. Hallelujah. You can never catch me say I am unrighteous. Why? Because I my reflection which I have found in the Word. Amen. Which I focus on, which I have not neglected, is that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Wake me up. Who are you? Are you righteous? Without even thinking, I'll say yes. Why? Because I have received the engrafted Word. So we are back to receiving now. That is what it means to receive the engrafted word. So, 
to receive the engrafted word is to focus on the word. It's to keep looking at your face. Amen. What? I mean, let's watch, watch TV here. We all watch TV, isn't it? What attracts us to the television? I remember sometimes, let me make this analogy. You know, um, what's the name of uh, this Indian something that we watch at? Z World. No, no, not Z World. Star Life. That's the one we watch to the most uh, in my house. They may finish one, they may be doing one series. And we are watching, we are watching, we are watching. And then we say, after this series, I'm not going to watch again. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then they start, you know the way those people advertise, they start another series. Now watching. Before you know it, you have already sat down. Before you know it, the first one you watch, ah, this storyline is interesting though. Before you know it, you are hooked. Amen. Why? You are beholding your face in <laughs> You are beholding the world of star life. Amen. That, so you are a star life enthusiast. I don't want to use the word addict. We should not be addicted to it. Amen. You are a star life enthusiast. The same thing we should do with God's word. Hallelujah. Those movie, those things that we watch, they are shaping our thoughts about the Indian culture. In fact, some of us can even say some things about the Indian culture. Not that we've been to India before. Not even that we even have any Indian friend. Just because we have watched the world. The various ways that they do their... Some of us can tell, you know, the various, all the various steps, all the various ceremonies that will lead into marriage. Because they do it every now and then. Amen so also is the word of God. In fact, we should do more with God's word because it is our natural face. If you do not, if you neglect God's word, amen, you can be hearing it, but you are not a doer. A doer is someone who continues, he said he continues in the walk. So which is that there is walk Doing the word is what? Walk. Hallelujah. It requires you carrying the Bible, reading, studying, meditating, searching. Hallelujah. Giving diligence to it. I want to notice that sometimes it looks as if, man, the Bible is the last thing you want to read. I want to notice that I remember the first day I read Cain and Abel. I mean, when I read Cain and Abel when I was a teenager. You know, Frederick Forsyth. I, that book was, was this big. You know, it was big. 
I read it in two days. Immediately I finished, I finished reading it. I, I started looking for the sequel to it. Shall we tell the president? I got that one too. I read it in a few days. Because that means I read for, I mean, practically the whole day. Because it was, and it had a, a very interesting storyline. But haven't you noticed, when, it's, when you carry your Bible, that's when sleep will want to come. Am I in the right company? You say, uh, maybe it's because I did not sleep well. But when you are reading that other one, sleep didn't come. You know, and YouTube and Netflix has even made things worse. People can, you can sit down for five hours watching a series. Amen. And you will not feel sleepy. So that tells you something. That Doing the word is work. So you must approach it from the labor perspective. Amen. Paul talked about elders that labor in the word. What am I doing? I'm laboring in the word to feed you. I spend hours studying, hours listening to messages, hours reading my Bible because I want to give you a one hour sermon. And also feed myself. It is what? Work. And so we, and you know, you don't approach your work casually, do you? Do you? No. You prepare for work. Those of us that went to work today, you didn't just wake up. You say, okay, today is work. Okay. Uh, what will I wear? Oh. Some of us already know what we are going to wear tomorrow to work. Praise God. You prepare for it. The same thing. Remember, he calls it what? Work. So you don't treat looking at your face, natural face in the mirror with Levity. You plan. You have schedules for it. Don't you have schedule at work? Your work schedule starts at what time? 8 a.m. in the most case and closes at 5. Or for some, indefinitely. Someone is smiling in front of me. Praise the Lord. You know, So, don't treat it with casual. This is not casual work. It is labor. Tell your neighbor it is labor. Labor in the word. By the time we labor in the word, it will start to control our speech. Hallelujah. <laughs> James chapter 1. I, I said I want to close at 7.30. I'll close at 7.30 because we are burning fuel. Praise the Lord. So, 
Look at James chapter 1. He said, be ye doers of the word. So what is, what is, what does it mean to do the word again? Behold. One says, no, to, to do the word is to practice the word. You can't practice the word, amen, that you don't do. What does it mean to do? To keep beholding. How do I get to practicing? Keep beholding. Hello? Keep what? Beholding. Keep looking. <laughs> Let me show you something. Fire lemon. That's the book before Hebrews. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our what? Dearly beloved and fellow laborer. And to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, to the church in your house. Verse 4. I thank my God making of you, mention of you always where? Hearing of what? Which you have towards the Lord Jesus and towards who? Towards all saints. So Philemon's faith and love towards saints was renowned. Amen. Look at verse 7. For we have great joy and consolation in your love because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by you, brother. What was the testimony of Philemon? That he was love on two legs. That Philemon was what? A, a love being. He practiced the love work. People admired and noted him for his love work. Look at verse 9. Verse 8. Wherefore, although I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin ye the that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech ye, be such as one Paul as the aged and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech you for my son Onesimus, whom I have what? Which in time past was to thee unprofitable. but now profitable to you and to me, whom I sent again, thou therefore receive him that is my own bowels. Hallelujah. This is it. Onesimus was Philemon's slave. Right? And Onesimus was not a Christian when he was with Philemon. But he ran away from his master for whatever reason. Okay? And Paul said a time came, Onesimus was no longer, was not profitable to Philemon. But when Onesimus met Paul, he got born again. And Paul sent him back. Praise God. Now, he was not telling Philemon, he was not profitable to you before.
but now he is profitable. But you know, Philemon, maybe Onesimus did something wrong and ran away and left his master. Right? Now, Paul is saying he is now profitable to you. In other words, he can come back to Philemon and Philemon will still be looking at him as that unprofitable servant. Whereas he's born again now. And Paul said we should not look at men from the human point of view. If Onesimus, does Onesimus have love? Huh? Yes. He's displayed love to all the saints. But do you know what? He can... Paul is talking to him so that he will not shut his bowels of love towards Onesimus. Because he can. Why? It's not because Onesimus is good or bad. That was the reason why Paul said in verse 6 that we quote often that the what? Communication of your faith will be what? Effective. How do we communicate our faith? Through love. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. How do I know that your faith is growing? When you are growing in your love walk. So Philemon, even though his faith, his love and faith is well known among brethren, but the sharing of the of his faith, right, will be effective. How do we know it's going to be effective? By sharing it with everyone without any discrimination. But in terms of, but as far as Onesimus is concerned, Philemon, if he does not, if he is not careful, he may not share his love with Onesimus. Because he will still be seeing Onesimus as what? The unprofitable servant. Don't let me waste my, my attention and my love and care on this guy. Is not worth it. So, by the acknowledging, how is Philemon going to ensure that Onesimus too, his, the love of, he's able to share love with him by the acknowledging of every good thing, not by confessing, oh Lord, when Onesimus comes, help me. You know, my heart has been very bitter towards him because of what he has done for me. Oh, Lord, help me to forgive Onesimus. Oh, Lord, help me uh, so that I can walk in love towards uh, Onesimus. No! Paul said, this is the way. You, the sharing of your faith will be effective by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. What does it mean to acknowledge? It means to recognize. It means to pay attention to. To know without beyond a shadow of a doubt. To put it in front of you. Are you following me tonight? Hallelujah. So he's saying that the sharing of your faith will be effective by acknowledging. So Oh, Philemon, keep acknowledging what you have. What do I have? I've got the love of God. So when Onesimus now comes into your circle, what will flow out will be the love of God, not the past of Onesimus. You will find it easy to, re to release Onesimus and walk and embrace him into your bowels uh, like a brother. So back to James chapter 1. So, how do I practice the word? What is the practice of the word in the first place? The practice of the word is what? Do the word. How do you do? 
Focusing on it. Meditating on it. Reading it. Searching it. Searching what manner of person you are. Looking at the mirror. The mirror says I'm an overcomer. Life says I'm a loser. No. Hallelujah. What do I take? I keep on looking at the word. And life will turn out well for me eventually. So many believers are here as because it takes work to do the word. Ever learning but never coming to the truth. Don't be an ever learner. Be committed to doing the work. One says, ah, you know, there was somebody, I think, yeah, if Etayo told us his story, when in fact I joined the church, he was, he used to smoke cocaine, he used to smoke weed. Yes, melody, can, <laughs> you can't believe it. You know, that was how he was, I mean, he, how he, did he join the church? Um, he heard me on radio and comes out with grace. And then he traced church and came here. He said he was even taking weed that day. I heard it, if I remember correctly. Now, he said, no, I, I, no, I, I didn't even know he was drink, taking weed. I didn't know. In fact, the year he joined church, I think, that year, he won the walk of the year or the year after. He won the walk of the year when we used to give those awards. Hallelujah. But how did he finally... Now, was he born again? Yes. He was born again, no? He was very born again. Well, how did he get out of it? Amen. He just followed my instruction, which is what I'm giving you today. Stay with the word. I remember he got, he said he used to listen to the word, listen to Encounters with Grace. He recorded them. He used to listen and listen and listen. He would be in church listening to God's word, soaking in God's word. Looking at it, saying what God's word says, it becomes a whole lot easier for you to say when you are looking at it. Said one day he took this something and the urge disappeared because he came into himself the real. New creation. He didn't have to struggle and struggle and say, oh God. Yeah. Somebody called me, you know, on, after listening to the radio and sent me a message. He said, oh, that I try, I'm trying to, you know, to come up spiritually, you know, but suddenly sometimes, every now and then, something just happens and I just go down spiritually. Oh, pastor, help me. I don't know what. I need deliverance. I told her, sister, you don't need deliverance. Hallelujah. Because upon Mount Zion are the delivered ones. Upon Mount Zion are what? The delivered ones. I said, just keep looking. Praise God. Keep looking. It's because you are not looking enough. Keep looking. You will amount to what you look at. Because it is a reflection of your face at the new birth. Your person. Who you became the day you got born again. 
That's your natural face. As a believer, your natural face is not wrote to a family face. Uh -uh. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. That is your natural face. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So doing the word. He says, when that person, look at, let's close with verse 25. James chapter 1. Whoso looketh into what? The perfect law of liberty. What is the perfect law of liberty? Also called. Huh? The word of truth, which is also called the engrafted word. So, James is t telling us the engrafted word is the word of truth, which is also the perfect law of liberty. And continue it therein. What is he continue? What does it mean by continue? He continues to look. He not being a forgetful hearer. Who is a forgetful hearer? Is one that neglects and stops to look. Or does not look regularly. Or just looks haphazardly. But a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. What is the, what does it mean to be blessed in his deed? It means the person is going to be successful at bringing out what he sees. Praise the Lord. Be, to be blessed in his deed is to amount to what God says you are. In the word. Glory to God. That's what it means. He's not talking about financial prosperity here. Yes, there is financial prosperity. But he's talking about being successful at who God says you are. Living out. One says, I want to be holy. Lord, help me to be holy. Lord, help me to be holy. Let Help me to be holy. You see, you are holy. He calls you holy brethren. So when I keep looking at that, holiness naturally flows out. Praise God. Did you get that? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We give you glory. Thank you for opening the eyes of understanding. We receive this truth. May we be established in it and in all righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll